My dear students, welcome back. Plus one biology topics, biology ke classification chapter, kingdom, fungi. You know, the singular term is fungus. Fungi, what type of members are they in this kingdom? Are they prokaryotic, eukaryotic, unicellular, multicellular? Tell me. You know one thing. Okay. So this is the last kingdom introduced. And you know Robert Whittaker separated the organisms. Which type of organisms into this kingdom? They were earlier under planting. But Whittaker introduced a new kingdom for them because they showed a large number of dissimilarities from planting. The main features, unlike plants, fungi are not photosynthetic. They don't have a cellulosic cell wall. Because of the two main features, they were separated into a new kingdom by Robert Whittaker. The first feature, okay, you know they are eukaryotic, okay, eukaryotic members and they are multicellular but some members are unicellular okay like yeast then exceptions are they then very important feature why they are in a separate kingdom their cell wall is not made up of cellulose instead it is made up of chitin the cell wall of fungi are the cell wall of fungi is chitinous made up of chitin which is a polysaccharide like cellulose okay cellulose is a polysaccharide this is another polysaccharide which is a heteropolysaccharide okay so it's made up of chitin and another important feature unlike plants fungi are heterotrophic they show heterotrophic nutrition no fungus is autotrophic Okay, for the, these are the characteristic features of fungi. They are eukaryotic, they are multicellular except some members and their cell wall is chitinous and they are heterotrophic in nutrition. Then about the fungi, when we discuss where are fungi seen? Where we can see fungus? Tell me. Yeah, if your uh, paper, your book is kept wet in a place, within 2-3 days you can see the fungus spores in that. It shows fungal attack. Okay, your leather shoes, your belt, your dress, okay, your paper, your books, your anything, even you can be fungal attacked. That means we can say fungi are cosmopolitan in distribution, it can be seen everywhere. Okay, fungi can be seen everywhere, and fungi can spread into a host area, it can spread very quickly because of the fungal spores. Okay, their main reproduction strategy is by forming spores. Okay, and about the structure of fungi. Okay, see, we have discussed the fungi members are mostly multicellular except yeast, which is a unicellular fungus. Okay, all other members are multicellular. About the structure of fungi, see, multicellular fungi, they are mostly filamentous. Okay, they show filamentous body. Okay, see it forms a filamentous body and the filamentous body of fungi is called hypha. Okay, hyphae. See, the fungal body is filamentous. It is known as hyphae and this hyphae can be sometimes without any septa, without any partition wall. Okay, with number of nuclei. Sometimes it can be with septa, partitions. Okay, this is called the septate hypha. Whereas this is a septate hypha. A septate. Okay, it is cenocytic when it is having many nuclei. Multinucleated a septate. Cenocytic. You can see we will discuss it there. And it, Understand? Hypha means the filamentous body of fungi. And this hypha can be either septate with the partition wall and one nucleus in each cell or without partition wall a multinucleated cytoplasm. Okay, this is septate, this is aseptate. 
So this kind of multinucleated cytoplasm is known as xenocytic. Xenocytic means a large tube with many nuclei. It means multinucleated cytoplasm. Okay. Some fungi show that type of hyphae. So hyphae can be either septate or aseptate in fungi. So then understand one more term. A network of the hyphae. I mean a group of hyphae is also known as mycelium. A network of hyphae is called mycelium. Fungal mycelium. Maybe a familiar word for you. Mycelium. You have studied earlier. Anyway understand. Most of the fungi have filamentous body which is known as hypha and this hyphae aggregate a network, a collection is known as mycelium. The hyphae can be individually either septate or aseptate and if a septate, it consists of only one nucleus within one cytoplasm, one cell, where if it's aseptate, it is remaining like a tube with many nuclei filled, multinucleated tube. Such tube is known as xenocytic. Such a hypha is known as xenocytic hypha. Okay, that's about a fungi structure. Unicellular structure shows single cell with the eukaryote, I mean the true nucleus. Okay. You know fungi cause diseases in plants, animals, etc. And then you have to just write that thing. I mean the harmful effects and useful sites of fungi. You know the useful sites of fungi. I mean the, it helps in decomposition and so you know penicillin. Penicillin you know. It obtains an antibiotic obtained from fungus. You know, there are so many uses for fungi. Neurospora like fungi are very greatly used in studies. Okay, our um, researchers. Likewise, some examples you collect and write. What are the uh, economic importances of fungi? It means it's harmful sites also you have to write. Uses of fungi and harms of fungi. Okay, will you write it for next plus? Okay, okay. Let's do as a homework assignment. What are the harmful sites and beneficial sites of fungi? Then we can just move to the reproduction of fungi. What is the common method of reproduction in fungi? You have studied it earlier. Fungi reproduce by spore formation. The most common type of reproduction in fungi is spore formation. Fungi not only produce sexual spores, it produces two types of spores. Asexual spores and Sexual spores. That means in fungi, as a part of asexual reproduction, spores are produced, and as a part of sexual reproduction, also spores are produced. In asexual reproduction, the common spores produced by fungi are sporangiospores. Are sporangiospores. It can be either zoospore, motile spores, or aplanospores, non motile spores. I mean, zoospore mean motile spore, aplanospore mean non motile spore. Both are produced within sporangium, a sac. So it's known as sporangiospores. Not even in detail, just understand. Asexual spores are sporangiospores, conidia, etc. Okay. Hmm? The examples for asexual spores are zoospores, aplanospores, conidia. Hmm? And these are produced within sporangium, a sac like structure. You can see here, it's a sac like structure, sporangium, ascospores, and basiliospores. Okay? And if it is a sexual reproduction, if the fungi undergo sexual reproduction, just remember, just have an elaboration on sexual reproduction. If it's a sexual reproduction, there are three main strategies it's isogamy. Anisogamy and oogamy. Just familiarize this terms. Okay? Isogamy and anisogamy. An advanced version of anisogamy is oogamy. In isogamy, two similar gametes are fused. Fusion of two similar gametes mean that is called isogametes. Isogamy. That means one gamete is non-motile, other also non-motile, this to fuse. That is isogamy. One gamete is motile, other gamete also motile, both are similar, they fuse. This is isogamy. Whereas in anisogamy, two dissimilar gametes fuse. In anisogamy, 
there is a fusion of two dissimilar gametes one may be non motile other may be motile okay one may be small in size other may be big in size okay like different shape of gametes will be there okay if the gametes are dissimilar then i mean gametes on fusion only form that is called sexual reproduction right so in the sexual reproduction if two similar gametes fuse that is called isogamy if two dissimilar gametes fuse that is called an isogamy an advanced version of is an isogamy is two main types an advanced version of an isogamy is oogamy in oogamy the female gamete is large female is represented with that symbol a sphere and a plus sign female gamete is non motile large okay whereas the male gamete is small and motile motile small male gamete is represented by the symbol a sphere and an arrow above okay so the male gamete is small and in the fusion if the male gamete is small and it comes to fuse a large female gamete which is non motile stationary then it is called oogamy this is an advanced version of anisogamy this is what is seen in human being also our egg or ovum is non motile is large and it is fused with a sperm which is a small gamete which is motile okay this is an advanced version of anisogamy and there are three types isogamy anisogamy oogamy it's clear i think it is in connection with the sexual reproduction of fungi and again in connection with the sexual reproduction of fungi we have discussed the three major steps in the sexual reproduction of fungi three major steps in the sexual reproduction of fungi regarding the sexual reproduction in fungi we have some more concept to learn the first case here we can say the sexual cycle of fungi i mean the sexual reproduction of fungi has three main steps in the sexual cycle when two fungal hyphae come closer suppose these two are fungal hyphae parts this when these two come closer their cells either their cells as such act as gametes or there will be a separate gamete formed as i have drawn earlier i mean uh, flagellate gametes non motile gametes okay suppose these two fungi come closer these cells are acting as the gametes if so the first step in the cell sexual cycle is plasmogamy during sexual reproduction the first step between the two hyphae cells is plasmogamy the second step is karyogamy okay and the third step is meiosis okay just understand just understand here when these two hyphae come closer okay suppose i uh, am just drawing these two very nearby then this has come very close okay these two cells are acting as a gamete hmm? so what happens these two cells are acting as a gamete what happens at first is the fusion of the two protoplasm i mean the cytoplasm of both the cells fuse so that is what is called fusion of cytoplasm is known as what plasmogamy at first both of them uh, show the fusion of both the cells show fusion of their cytoplasm it is known as plasmogamy the next process is the karyogamy it is the fusion of nuclei okay the fusion of the nuclei here will be the nuclei fused okay first there will be the fusion of their cytoplasm then there will be the fusion of their nuclei and now this nucleus has become double conduct both are fused it is called diploid now it has become diploid 2n but actually in a fungal cell in a fungal body all these are haploid these are all haploid this is another haploid half set of chromosomes only but this has on fusion produced what diploid we don't we don't require a diploid one to again propagate to diploid body i mean if this is developing new hyphae all the cells will be diploid right it should not be 
We need only haploid cells and fungi. Fungal cells are haploid. So what should be done? So this cell undergo meiosis. That is the third step. Okay. So this step normally here form a very big protein body. Every step, every events happen inside that the reproductive structure. Like this kind of reproductive structure will be formed. Inside that only spores are formed. Okay. Anyway, so plasmogamy fusion of cytoplasm, karyogamy fusion of nuclei. Then after that, this resulting a diploid nucleus. Okay, a spore we can say a diploid cygot spore. Instead of cygot, we use the term cygospore. Okay, a diploid cygospore, and it immediately undergoes meiosis to produce haploid spores. This can form fungal hyphae. Okay, this haploid spores after meiosis produce haploid spores. This form fungal hyphae. Then everything the hyphae also become haploid. This is what is the sexual cycle of fungus. Okay, interesting. Two fungal hyphae come closer. First, whichever cells are acting as the gametes. First, they are cytoplasm fuses. First, their cytoplasms fuse. Then, they are nuclei fuse. Plasmogamy, karyogamy. After nuclear fusion, it's a diploid nucleus forming. This we can call as cytospore. It is not required as such. It should be uh, reduced to half. I mean, it should produce haploid spores by meiosis. So the third step is meiosis in the sexual cycle of fungi. I think it's clear, okay, about the sexual cycle of fungi with the plasmogamy, karyogamy, and meiosis. And more doubt means we will elaborate in the live session. Okay.